Imagine powering the industrial heart of Europe with the vast sun-drenched expanse of the Sahara Desert. Sounds like science fiction, but a new proposal suggests it might just be the most audacious engineering project of the 21st century. Germany, Europe's largest economy, is in a race to solve a huge energy crisis. The nation is moving away from its old-school nuclear and coal-fired power plants. They've mainly already closed down, leaving a massive gap in its power supply that renewables inside its borders cannot hope to fill. But what if the answer wasn't in the cloudy skies of Bavaria or the Mistral or Scirocco winds spinning the turbines, but 5,000 kilometres away beneath the relentless Moroccan sun? This is the story of a colossal plan called Sila Atlantic, a proposal to build a giant undersea power cable connecting two continents. It's an idea for an energy lifeline that could secure Germany's future, reshape the geopolitics of power, and create a blueprint for a new world of energy. But is a project this insane actually possible? Is it a visionary masterstroke or just a multi-billion dollar fantasy money pit? Now, to look at why Germany is looking so far south, you have to first understand the immense pressure it's under. Country is deep in its energy transition, a nation, national mission to decarbonise its entire economy. This has meant shutting down all of its nuclear reactors and steadily closing its coal plants, which for decades were the bedrock of its stable industrial power. At the same time, geopolitical shocks forced Germany to rapidly move away from the next cheapest, the natural gas. Uh, and that was uh, coming straight through a really convenient pipeline all the way from neighbouring Russia, which created a dependency that left its economy wide open. This has created a perfect storm. Electricity demand is rising as transport and heating go electric, while the good old reliable gas is dwindling along with the gas turbine generators, which now look set to stand idle. And while Germany has made incredible strides in renewable energy, there's a fundamental problem. The sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow. This on-again, off-again nature of renewables creates a critical need for a stable power source that can fill the gaps. The government itself has admitted that building enough backup power is a major challenge. Germany needs that massive reliable replacement source of clean energy, and it needs it really soon. That search has led to one of the most sun-rich places on Earth. The proposed solution is as simple in concept as it is breathtaking in its ambition. Sila Atlantic, this initiative put forward by the company x links from Germany, aims to do something unprecedented, transport huge amounts of solar and wind electricity directly from the Sahara Desert to the German grid. Well, this project is a new vision for an idea that first aimed to connect Morocco to the UK. That project has faced major delays, and has not secured financial backing from the British government. But of course, Core's concept was too powerful to abandon. Now, with a focus on Germany, the vision has been reborn, and it's even bigger. So why Morocco? Well, the solar potential of the Sahara Desert is almost hard to comprehend. We only need a fraction of it to provide the whole world with power. The region receives a staggering amount of solar radiation with theory or theoretical energy potential that dwarfs that of the whole of Europe. Morocco has already recognised this incredible natural advantage, investing billions into massive solar installations like the Quartazate Solar Power Station, as it positions itself to be a future exporter of green energy. Silo Atlantic would be the ultimate expression of that ambition, proposing a direct energy bridge between the Sahara's near limitless renewables and the energy hungry industrial centres of Germany. So, how would this even work? Well, let's start with the theory that, yeah, the solar panels are there already, they're working, producing electricity. How do you then move that much electricity across nearly 5,000 kilometres of mainly open sea? The answer lies in a remarkable piece of technology. It's called High Voltage Direct Current, or HVDC cables. Your regular power grid uses alternating current, or AC. Now, AC is fine for sending power over shorter distances, hundreds of miles or kilometres, but over thousands of miles the energy loss is immense. 
It's like trying to shout across a massive river. By the time your voice reaches the other side, it's pretty much just a faint whisper. Well, HVDC is different. It acts like a super highway for electricity, able to transmit huge amounts of power over vast distances with incredibly low losses, sometimes as low as 3% per thousand kilometres. It's the only technology that makes a project like Silo Atlantic even remotely possible. Well, the plan involves laying two of these massive HVDC submarine cables. These aren't your average wires. Each one is a complex bundle of a conductor core, layers of advanced insulation, a metallic sheath and heavy steel armour for protection. The route would be carefully plotted along the continental shelf to avoid the crushing pressures of depth and ocean trenches, passing through the waters of Portugal, Spain, France, Belgium and the Netherlands before finally turning right and connecting into the German grid. This point-to-point -point connection is a critical detail, simplifying the politics by not requiring electrical tie-ins to the countries it passes by. The sheer scale of the power being discussed is staggering. The ultimate goal is a capacity of 15 gigawatts. Well, to put that into perspective, that's enough electricity to power well over 10 million German homes. The projected initial phase alone, 3.6 gigawatts, aimed to deliver 26 terawatt hours of clean electricity a year, which is about 5% of Germany's entire power consumption. This isn't just an extension cord, it's a potential rewriting of Germany's energy map. But a project this ambitious comes with a colossal price tag and monumental changes. This is no sure thing, it's a high stakes gamble. First there's the cost. While there's no official final figure, estimates based on the smaller UK fo focused project suggest Silo Atlantic could be in the realms of 40 billion euros. Now, some like that would almost certainly require significant government guarantees, exposing taxpayers to financial risk and making finances a monumental task in itself. Then there are the engineering hurdles. This would be one of the longest and the most powerful undersea cable systems ever built. Manufacturing these specialised HVDC cables is a bottleneck with limited global production capacity. In fact, the project planners are reportedly considered building dedicated factories in Morocco just to make and supply the cables. Then there's the installation. Chartering specialised cable laying ships for an operation is going to take years to complete. All the while navigating waters of multiple nations. And perhaps the biggest hurdle of all is the politics. As the saying goes, connecting two continents with a power line isn't just an engineering problem, it's a geopolitical one too. On one hand, Germany and Morocco have forged a strategic climate and energy partnership, a key enabler for a project like this. But it would also mean Germany placing a significant chunk of its energy security totally in the hands of another nation, creating, well, I've seen them before, long-term vulnerabilities. We've all seen what happened to that in the recent past. Well, furthermore, delicate uh, regional politics like the long-standing dispute over the Western Sahara can create diplomatic friction that spooks international investors. Coordinating permits across all the nations whose waters the cable would cross adds yet another layer of immense complexity. Although that could be solved to a large degree by sticking to laying the cables in international waters. So if they can pull this off, if the two countries can be connected, what would it actually mean? Well, the impact would be transformative, both for Morocco and Germany, extending far beyond just giving a lot of revenue to one and a lot of electricity to the other. For Germany, a project like Silo Atlantic represents a potential lifeline. It's not a solution in itself, but it would offer a massive steady supply of clean electricity that perfectly complements its own domestic wind and solar, boosting its energy security and dramatically cutting its carbon emissions. It could also deliver power directly to the energy-hungry industrial south, potentially lowering, lowering grid infrastructure costs and supporting power-intensive industries like AI data centres. 
And for Morocco, this project could be a nation building opportunity. It would represent tens of billions of euros in investment, bring in huge technology transfers and help establish the country as a major renewable energy exporter to Europe. It would turn its most abundant natural resource sunshine into a high value export, creating jobs and driving economic growth for decades. And for Europe as a whole, it could be a blueprint for the future. A successful connection between Africa and Germany would prove that transcontinental green energy, grid, energy grids are not just possible, but practical. It could pave the way for a future where Europe's grid is interconnected with North Africa, maybe even the Middle East, drawing on the best renewable resources wherever they are. This would ensure a more stable, affordable and green power supply for the entire continent, marking a profound shift away from a dependency on finite fossil fuels. Well, the Solar Atlantic project is the definition of a moonshot. But you see, our aim today seems to be changing. We are now aiming for Mars, not the moon. So maybe a moonshot is well, it's something that we're going to do very soon. It's a breathtakingly audacious proposal loaded with financial, technical and political risks. The UK looked at it recently and walked away. That was as recent as this year. It's an attempt to build a nearly 5,000 kilometre bridge of electricity powered by the desert sun to secure the future of Europe's industrial engine. But look back a few years. 1898, more than a few years, we installed the very first transatlantic cable. And over the decades, we've installed a total matrix of additional cables, mainly internet cables, that keep the technical world turning. The line between a visionary masterpiece and a multi-billion dollar folly is a fine one, but as the world grapples with the urgent need to switch to clean energy, it's precisely these cold kinds of bold, paradigm-shifting ideas that may hold the key. Is this the future of global energy or a mega project dream that's a step too far? Well, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you have enjoyed this, please subscribe, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more deep dives into uh, the future of our energy, then please consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. Thanks very much to all our existing Patreon and YouTube members. And for now, that's it. I'm Dave.